brace yourselves, guys, because the dog lovers are going to have a field day with this one. They're going to love it, and they're going to use this as ammo, so share this video with them. There was an article published today on the bbc.co.uk website called Dogs Are Cleaner Than Beards, Say Swiss Scientists. I'm sure this study has been mentioned in numerous other places. As I said, they're going to love this. Uh, the study, which I will link you to, says they compared the bacterial load in, quote, colony-forming units of human pathogenic microorganisms, end quote, in specimens taken from 18 men and 30 dogs. Human pathogenic microorganisms means microorganisms that can cause disease in humans. The study shows that bearded men harbor significantly higher burden of microbes and more human pathogenic strains than dogs. So in other words, they found more microbes in the men's beards than in the dog's fur. It also says they found more microbes in human mouths than dog mouths. My first thought after reading the study was, I wonder which part of the dog's bodies they obtained the fur samples from. Obviously, a dog will have significantly more microbes on some parts of its body than others. The study itself, which I found on the NCBI website, did not say from where on the dog's bodies the samples were taken. However, in the BBC article, it states, quote, researchers from the Herslanden Clinic in Switzerland took swabs from the facial fuzz of 18 men and the necks of 30 dogs across a range of breeds and compared the results between the two, end quote. Now, which part of the dog's necks? Under the chin, in the front of the neck, or behind the neck? How much bacteria can get on the back of a dog's neck? A dog can't reach the back of its neck with its tongue. When it licks its anus and then licks all over its fur, spreading traces of feces all over itself, it can't spread those traces of feces to the back of its neck because it can't lick the back of its neck. It can scratch its neck with its paws, but when a dog scratches itself, it can't easily reach the back of its neck, can it? Like with its paws? So any microbes on the dog's paws can't reach the back of its neck easily. Like we need to know which part of the dog's neck the samples were taken from. If they were taken from the back of the dog's necks, then it's no wonder the samples had less bacteria than the human beards. To make this a fair study, they should take a sample from a part of a man's body he rarely, if ever, touches, in the same way a dog is rarely touching the back of its neck. Of course, men's beards are dirty because they're always touching their beards with their hands, but a dog can't easily reach the back of its neck. It's not often touching the back of its neck, if at all. So I'd like to see a comparison between the microbial load of a man's beard and the microbial load of fur taken from a dog's belly or a dog's legs or paws. The study says, quote, more microbes were found in human oral cavities than in dog oral cavities, end quote. Now, I'm having a big problem with this. Comparing the bacteria in a human mouth with the bacteria in a dog's mouth is like comparing apples and eggs. An article published by National Geographic in 2017 explains how many of the bacteria present in dogs' mouths are not present in human mouths, which means these types of bacteria are not kept in check by our immune systems. Our bodies are not used to them because we don't carry them. So when they do get into our bodies, it can be very dangerous. And that is one of the main reasons why we can get infections from our pets. It's because our bacterial ecosystems are so different from each other. So even if a dog does have less bacteria, it has more harmful bacteria, which can make us sick. They believe the bacteria present in our mouths is determined by what we eat. For example, human mouths are dominated by streptococcal bacteria, which are good at eating sugars, which humans eat lots of. Dogs don't eat a lot of sugars, so they have almost no strep. But because dogs lick and eat a lot of really gross stuff, they have bacteria that are unfamiliar to us. The article says a single lick can deposit untold millions of these unfamiliar bacteria and that if you're licked by a dog and rub a Q-tip over that spot five hours later, they can recover over 50 different species of these unfamiliar dog bacteria. And like I said, some of these bacteria can be harmful to us because our immune systems are not used to keeping them in check. For example, Capnocytophaga bacteria, which is found in the mouths of all dogs, has been in the news recently. Well, last summer, 
a man was licked by a dog and had to have his limbs amputated because the dog transmitted this bacteria to him, which caused a massive infection. The bacteria also killed a woman last summer when she became infected after a dog nipped her hand. This deadly bacteria is not present in the mouths of humans. So to say human mouths harbor more bacteria than dogs' mouths is misleading. It can make people jump to the conclusion that dogs' mouths are cleaner. But that's not the case. Dogs' mouths contain more gram-negative bacteria and types of bacteria that are harmful to us. The study doesn't mention this. It seems to want the reader to jump to the conclusion that dogs' mouths are cleaner. But it isn't that cut and dry. It also says, quote, as the MRI scanner used for both dogs and humans was routinely cleaned after animal scanning, there was substantial lower bacterial load compared with scanners used exclusively for humans. I'm just worried someone might read this and think, aha, the scanners that the dogs went in uh, were cleaner than the ones used exclusively for humans. So that means humans are dirtier than dogs. But I just want people to read it carefully, read what it says. You know, the, the, the scanner that the dogs were going into was being routinely disinfected. Uh, and the ones that, the scanners that only humans were going into were not being disinfected. So it's no wonder the scanners used for both dogs and humans were cleaner than the ones used only for humans. They were being routinely cleaned and disinfected while the other ones were not. So I just wanted to make that clear in case anyone missed that. You know, this article about men's beards having more bacteria than dogs fur sort of reminds me of the misuse of statistics I discussed in my video about Canine Journal and how they misrepresent information to paint dogs in a favorable light. They give you information which is not incorrect, but it's presented in such a way that a faulty conclusion can easily be reached. In this case, the conclusion that dogs are cleaner than human beards one can't reach that conclusion unless they know more details, such as from which part of the body was the dog fur obtained? When had the men last showered or bathed? Had the dogs been bathed? I don't think this article holds up to scrutiny. I wonder if it wasn't funded by the pet industry. Maybe the anti-dog channels on YouTube are becoming a bit too powerful? We're making them sweat a little? No, seriously. It, it just reminds me of stories that the media puts out such as dogs are good for our health you hear this a lot they love to tell us that they'll make you live longer and so forth um you know it's a huge selling point but is it accurate in a future video i will discuss how there are indeed studies that point to the fact that dogs are good for our health however there are also many many studies which the media never mentions that show how people who don't own dogs are just as healthy or even healthier than dog owners. The evidence is very conflicting, but this is never mentioned. The only things they seem to mention in the news, in the media, are the features that make dogs an attractive investment. More on this in a future video. But let me know what you think about this study. I think it's a load of colony forming units of human pathogenic microorganisms. In other words, crap.